you might be feeling like it's you against the world. You might be feeling like you're facing these fights that you just can't handle and you just feel overwhelmed. But I just want to encourage you right now, right off the top here, Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 15, God says to you, He says, listen carefully. Listen carefully to me, child. Focus in on now what God's going to say to you. He says, He's with you. And He says, don't be afraid. Don't be dismayed. That means don't be agitated. Don't be discouraged. Don't be worried. He says, the battle does not belong to you, but the battle is the Lord's. He's going to fight for you. You know what you get? You get to have His victory. So let's just welcome the Holy Spirit to help us. We're talking about United. We're on United Part 2, and this is going to be so exciting. This is for you. You're right at the right place at the right time. Holy Spirit, help us. Lord, open our hearts to receive your word, your incorruptible seed. And Lord, may it bring forth life, life in Jesus' precious name. Amen. United Part 2, and I just, I want to do a quick little review because United Part 1, you, we want to build on what we've already talked about. In United Part 1, listen to this review. We read a great story out of Genesis 11 about the Tower of Babel, which was really about unity, but wicked unity, and how powerful even wicked unity is. We learned that being united makes extraordinary power and unlimited potential available to us. But we also learned that there is a good unity and there's an evil unity, an evil alliance. The difference is the core values that steer the results. God's hand is moved to make supernatural results happen when we are united. But that begs the question, around what? Jesus said this in Matthew 18, 19. He said, if two of you shall agree on earth concerning anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them by my Father who is in heaven. Pam and I, we have lived by that verse in our marriage because we realize as a married couple, we can agree. You know, in that word in the, the Greek, he, agree that we read there in the English really means to harmonize. It's not about sameness, but about harmony. And we talked about that in part one. And it was so exciting to realize that God isn't calling you to lose your identity, but he wants to give you your identity to, to really bring it alive in the body of Christ. Remember, 1 Peter 5 says that the devil, the enemy, goes about like a lion, a roaring lion, looking for whom he can devour. You see, he cannot defeat you, but you can defeat yourself if you take his bait. He can't defeat you, but you can defeat you if you take his bait. His strategy is to use division to, to isolate you, to make you vulnerable. We want you blessed. We want you covered, healed, joy-filled, strong, not condemned, but with confidence. You know, the Bible says the righteous are bold as a lion. Well, we want you walking in the righteousness of the King of Kings. Jesus' righteousness is bulletproof. We want you understanding God's word and his will for your life, walking in hope and faith in your heart so you can live life strong. That's right. That's God's plan for your life. So let's dig into part two here where we're going to be talking about united in heart, united in your personal unity. I know. Isn't that amazing that you yourself can live divided or you can be united within the integrity of your own heart, mind, and soul. So important. Ralph Waldo Emerson, the famous writer and poet of the 19th century in America said this, quote, the reason why the world lacks unity and lies broken and in heaps is because man is disunited within himself. I think Mr. Emerson felt the weight of that experience personally. Now, little Andrew, on the other hand, he had a, a similar negative take on life as he sat at the table and his mom was telling him to eat his dinner. He frowned and he was sad. And finally, he just said, you know what? He said, salad is just ruining my life. <laughs> ah, the brokenness of humanity. Salad is ruining my life. In this very important installment, part two of this series we call United, I want to take you to the critical aspect or perspective of your own personal state of being united. 
It's critical because your inner reality always becomes your outer reality. The invisible has power and ability to manifest in your life. Jesus said it this way. He said, what's hidden will be made manifest. That's Luke 12, verse 2. What's hidden will be made manifest. That's coming from Jesus, the King of Kings. Now that goes for whatever's good or for whatever's bad. Invisible stuff becomes visible stuff. That's why Jesus told us in Matthew 6, He said, pray in secret, give in secret. He said, love, forgive. Why? Because hidden stuff is planted stuff and therefore has the power to grow and multiply. But that also applies to, yeah, you guessed it, crazy stuff. That's why we need God's help. Jesus' blood to deal with our sin, our iniquity, the fractures, the brokenness of our life, our own broken experiences. Listen to me. What doesn't get repaired gets repeated, but at a new amplified and multiplied level. You know, if you take a seed and you hold it out of the ground in the light, it doesn't grow. But the moment you put it hidden in the ground, it begins to activate and grow. Those are the hidden things in your life. So what's hidden in your life? Falling off a chair, it hurts, right? I think we've all done that at some point in our life. Falling off a chair, it hurts. But falling from a 20-story penthouse balcony, it kills. Don't lust after promotion if you've promoted lust in the secret place of your heart and mind. There was a national popular leader years ago. I think it was in the early 2000s. He was a top-selling author, communicator, quite famous, but he had not dealt with the fractures that he had hidden in his heart. Suddenly his life imploded. His ministry imploded. Everything, you know, his family, his church, everything around him just, it was, it was on national news. It was a mess. But why was everyone shocked that he fell. Why are we so shocked when the invisible overtakes the visible? When the seeds sown in secret suddenly grow overnight and produce. And that's for good things as well. The idea promoting unity is such a global theme right now. It's got cultural horsepower, doesn't it? And universal acceptance to be any kind of ambassador of unity. After all, unity is the panacea for the modern culture. That's just what we like to think. This is what we like to say, but we really don't define the reality of is it good unity or bad unity because there's both. Here's the bottom line, though. You can only give what you have. You can talk unity, but if you're fractured internally, you're really an agent of division. Even when you're buzzing the talking points of unity on Facebook. I know. You see, you can't help it. You're divided, so you unconsciously try to divide until it seems like it's even your personal ministry. But I've got good news for you. Oh, yes. I'm here to bring the good news. God wants to heal you. He wants to repair you. He wants to unite your heart so that you can, look, so that you can lecture others on unity. No, no, no. So that we can learn from the giver of life, receive from the giver of life. Praise God. Psalm 86, verse 11. Listen to the psalmist. Look, look, listen to his prayer. It's beautiful. Teach me your way, O Lord, that I may walk and live in your truth. Direct and unite my heart solely, reverently to fear and honor your name. You see, it starts with sound teaching. The ecclesia of Christ, the church of Christ, should teach anointed, root-growing, wall-building, roof-covering, protective, blessed truth, promoting God's way and God's kingdom. So you've got to ask yourself, ask yourself right now, with the Holy Spirit's help, let's just ask ourselves, are we intact? Are you intact? Do you feel put together? Are you personally unified? Do you feel complete? After an accident or a traumatic event, you, you often hear people say this, are you okay? Are you all right? You know, sometimes adults who were traumatized as children, they don't even realize that they've been broken. The trauma is such a constant part of their life, the pain that they begin to normalize it. Broken, pain, 
just becomes normal. You've heard people say, I, I feel like I'm falling apart. I'm cracking up. My heart is broken. Some people are even diagnosed with split personality or multiple personality disorders. You don't have to be at that extent to still feel like you're falling apart, like you're a divided person. You may be a little bit like this woman, Janice, who once said this. She said, I stress about stress before there's even stress to stress about. Then I stress about stressing over stress that doesn't need to be stressed about. It's so stressful. That's a confession right there. It might be an admission that you are kind of, sort of, falling apart on the inside. You can have a brand new car that looks like it's working perfectly, but when you get a chance to look under the hood and see that everything is unhooked, everything under the hood is disconnected. Look, I, I'm not a car expert by a long shot. Not at all. I don't have to be a car expert, though, to tell you and to know that no matter how put together that car looks on the outside, it's not going anywhere. We should never judge by the optics. The Bible says that man looks on the outside. God looks on the heart. That's in 1 Samuel. There was a humorous commercial years ago, financial planning commercial, and it had a young club DJ, and he had long dreadlocks, he had this biker beard, street clothes, and they cut off all of his hair, shaved his face, put an expensive suit on him, and placed him in an office as a qualified financial advisor, giving retirement advice to his clients. So he had memorized a few talking points, some investment jargon, and before and because of the context, the office and everything around, the client Clients really took him seriously. And finally, at one point, he kind of exposed himself and they showed in the, in the office room, in the boardroom, him as a DJ, like totally with long hair and jamming and playing this stuff. But you see, the bottom line that was being communicated in this commercial was that appearances can be deceitful. Make sure you have a certified, trained, qualified advisor, right? In other words, they were saying, what's really under the hood, it matters. It matters what's under the hood, even more than what the car looks like, than more than what the person's life looks like. What's under the hood is really the outcome of that person's life, the outcome of that car's um, ability to operate. First Samuel 16, 7. I kind of alluded to it, but listen to this. First Samuel 16, 7. And this, by the way, was when Samuel was called to anoint David as king over Israel. And he had bypassed David and gone on to all these older, stronger, taller, you know, good-looking brothers. He kept bypassing. Even the prophet thought, well, surely it's got to be this guy. And finally, here's what Samuel hears from God. 1 Samuel 16, 7. For the Lord sees not as man sees. For man looks on the outward appearance. Oh, how true that is. But the Lord looks on the heart. Mm. God sees the secret places of our life. Never to shame us. No, not to shame you, but with the intent to heal, to repair, to connect, to help you, to get you operational, to get your identity fired up and working. My friend, if we were to look under your hood, are you disconnected, fragmented, unhooked? And if you are, get excited because God is the master human mechanic. God is able to make you entire. He's able to connect, connect you, make you whole, to tune you up. He is able to unite your heart again so it's back to its manufacturer's standard of design and of perfection. God is the original human engineer. Oh my goodness, that's good. Your design, your identity demands a purpose for living, to receive to grow, and to give. Now think about a cherry tree for a second. A cherry tree receives sunlight, nutrients, but that's not who it is still. It grows roots, branches, leaves, but that's still not who it is. It gives fruit, cherries, but that's still not who it is, but its purpose supports its true identity. It receives, it grows, it gives, because purpose supports true identity, but never replaces it. It can't replace it. So if you're not fulfilling your true purpose in life, you live disconnected from your real identity. It doesn't mean that God doesn't fully, entirely love you. No, 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 no. 
God dearly loves you and values you. Listen to this. Jesus said this in John 14, verse 1. He said this, Do not let your heart be troubled or afraid. Believe confidently in God. Trust in God. Have faith. Hold on to. Rely on God. Keep going and believe also in me. This is what Jesus said. If you find yourself troubled right now, afraid, even just uneasy and lacking confidence, that's a symptom of not having your believer and truster properly connected. That's all. You're misfiring. You might even be backfiring as you drive through life. It doesn't sound pretty. You may be on social media talking like a hair on fire, panic soul, and it's all because you're not personally united. Don't feel condemned right now. I don't want you feeling condemned. It's just that your soul is disconnected. It's backfiring. That's why you express yourself and later regret how you express yourself. Don't be ashamed. Don't be discouraged. Even if you said something crazy and wish you could take it back, you truly are designed in the image of God. You really are made to win, born to win, and you just need to allow Holy Spirit access to your heart. He'll do soul surgery on the inside of you. Hey, even the most amazing expensive sports car in the world would be going nowhere, sitting in the ditch if you unhook the connection, the unity of its parts. So don't get all condemned and beat up on yourself. Personal unity is essential to operating fully at your design's potential. Simply put, you cannot fulfill your God-given design and purpose without being personally united in heart. I got to come back to Psalms 86 verse 11 again. Let's read it again. Teach me your way, O Lord, that I may walk and live in your truth. You see, we can't walk and live in His truth without Him teaching us His way. Direct and unite my heart. Oh, God, do it solely, reverently to fear and honor your name. Why is there so much dishonor in our culture? Because our hearts are divided. They're not united. We need our hearts united to fear and reverence the name of God. And if we don't fear and honor the name of God, we're not going to honor anybody or anything else. King David, the psalmist, went on in verse 12 and he said, Oh Lord, my God, with my whole united heart. You see, with my whole heart. People keep singing about my whole heart, but they have a divided, fractured heart. It's not holding water. It's not holding life. He said, I will glorify your name forever. But how? With a whole united heart. You see, we can't truly glorify God with half a heart, unhooked heart, with a fragmented heart. Why? Because it's not working. You're not going anywhere. That's why 3 John 2 says this. I wish that you would prosper, be in good health. But listen, here's the punchline. Even as your soul prospers, if your soul is fragmented and fractured, how can you be in good health? How can you prosper externally if internally you're falling apart? Your life must unite. It must correlate. My friend, your inner reality always becomes your outer reality. When you're disconnected in heart, lacking personal unity of soul, you can't effectively unite with the rest of God's family. Oh, sure, you, you know, you're, you're loved. You're just ineffective. You're stalled. Your life is up on blocks. You may find yourself on social media along with all the other hair on fire people. If you find yourself in a coalition of accusation instead of a form of praise, well, your life needs to be reconnected. This is why you're getting stuck in these places. You're getting stuck in social media because you're not connected properly. You need Holy Spirit. Look, I need Holy Spirit. We all need Holy Spirit to unite our hearts in the reverential awe of the living God. And if we don't do that, we can't hold honor. Look here at the extreme possibilities available to us when we are united with God's Holy Spirit. Listen to this, Ephesians 6.10. In conclusion, be strong in the Lord. Be empowered through your union with Him. Draw your strength from Him that strength which His boundless might provides. See, even when we try to do things but that were not fueled by the strength of the Holy Spirit, it becomes futile. Even you're trying to raise your children, and you have such a loving heart, you want to do the right thing, but you find yourself failing over and over and over because you're trying to do the right thing without the right battery source, without the right power source. Holy Spirit wants to empower you to do the right thing. 
because you know your inner reality becomes your outer reality. You can't be patient with your own disconnection. You must seize the moment and allow God to unite your heart. There's this wonderful story of a young Nigerian math teacher. His name was Michael Thompson. He was crippled, needing crutches to help him stand. And when he first started, his students would mock him. And he was hurt because of it. But he chose to help them. He wanted to help them receive. He wanted to help them grow. He set his eyes on helping them be able to give attention to the gift of math. That was his approach. Michael united that class around a message of love and respect. More than math, he united them around a message of love and respect. They became better people, not just better at math. They became better people, and they all came to deeply, deeply love and value Michael. He was their mentor. He was like a father image, even though he was so young. If you find yourself in the right assignment but unable to connect, you're not being rejected. The problem is internal. You're internally unhooked, fragmented. Your inner reality is forcing, yes, steering your outcome. Is it fixable? Absolutely, but not by changing the outer circumstances. No, that's the enemy's tactic to get you involved in an exercise of futility. Blame the world around you, blame the people, blame the politicians, the economy, the system, man. It's the system that's wired against me. When 1 John 4, 4 says this, greater is he who is in you than he that is in this world. You gotta say no to blame. Now that doesn't mean you're, you're assigned to evil people. To forgive, yes. But to waste time, no. Always remember, you're you're to put the right seed in the right ground. Even the father of the prodigal son didn't sow emails or Christmas gift baskets into a boy wasting his life and his inheritance. Is that tough love? No, not really. It's unfailing love. It was resurrecting family love. Put your eye on the outcome. Always look at the outcome. Don't let the enemy sidetrack you on all these, well, what about this? Well, what will this person feel? Look at what this will, the outcome. See, love never fails because it gets an outcome. Romans 15 verse 6 says this, that together you may unanimously with united hearts, here we bow back to the united heart, together, see, we're together, we may with unanimously with united hearts and one voice praise and glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah. This is what Father wants. We can't be united together if we're not first personally united to Christ and His core principles. We have a habit of uniting our voices in song with completely disconnected hearts. The one voice, the one praise that the apostle was calling for occurred because of a united heart. The world settles for a form of unity in spite of beliefs. God honors unity based on True belief. You know, having your kids see it your way does not unite their hearts. It produces temporary results, but really not a united heart. Having your kids see it God's way unites their heart because it aligns with His standards. Isn't that what you want? Isn't that the outcome you want? Is it possible to lose a quality relationship with your children if you pursue unity based on your family's traditions Rules instead of God's standards and family name? Absolutely. No matter how good your family standards are, they will not unite a child's heart, a son's heart, a daughter's heart, and make that heart work to its fullest potential. You need God's supernatural standard for unity. If you play the short game, my friend, with your family, your marriage, If you play the short game, I can guarantee you this, you will lose and you will lose big. If you point your children in the direction of God's standard, then he will take responsibility for the fine work of uniting each individual heart for living life strong. That's what you want. Don't you want that? God involved with uniting your life, your family, maybe it's your business. Don't push religion or traditions on your children or your marriage. Don't do it. First, be personally united in heart. You do that by receiving the work of the Holy Spirit. Only He can do it. He's amazing at it. He is the top mechanic at heart surgery. He's the one that knows how to unite your heart. 
Don't go anyplace else. Secondly, you personally grow in unity of heart by submitting to the process of growth. You got to be growth minded. So first, be united by receiving the work of the Holy Spirit. Secondly, be willing to commit to growing. And then third, you got to give. According to God's standard, you put the right seed in the right ground. If you can't show your child what to do, then don't tell them what to do. Don't give advice that you're not living out of. You got to give that attention. You got to give heed. You got to give mercy, give love, forgiveness, love, kindness, give your talent, your resources, but give the right seed into the right ground. So let me conclude with this. Don't misread, don't misread your fractures or your brokenness as being final. One of the worst things that you can do is diagnose yourself as broken, fractured, beyond repair, and then conclude from there that you're worthless or just good for nothing but being bad. That's a trick of the enemy. As you examine the scriptures and the lives of so many heroes of faith, their particular brokenness, their fractured soul was often a major clue to their assignment, right? Abraham, he was an idolater when God met him, who worshiped the stars. God makes him the father of faith. How about Sarah, his wife? She was hopeless in heart and barren. What's God do? He calls her to become the mother of his God nation. What about Joseph? Joseph, the youngest, one of the youngest brothers and is rejected by all of his older brothers and becomes a slave. What's God's call on his life? To become a prince and a, a world leader. Rahab, the prostitute in Jericho. God makes her a hero, gives her a savior position and makes her the great, 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 great grandmother of Jesus. An amazing woman. What about Esther? Esther is an obscure Jewish orphan in captivity. What's God's plan for Esther? She becomes destined to reign as the queen of Persia. What about Gideon? When the angel met Gideon, he said, what, what do you want to do with me? He said, I'm the least of the least of the least of the least. I'm no good for nothing. And God announces over him, he says, you are a great and valiant warrior, an amazing man. What about Paul the Apostle? His name used to be Saul, and he was known for torturing and tormenting the church, for putting men and women and children in prison. Children, too. What happened to Paul? His name got changed from Saul to Paul, and he became a builder and even a martyr, laying down his life for the church. I'm telling you, my friend, Satan likes to wound you where he thinks you'll be effective in defeating him. So why does God use your brokenness? Well, because God is able to turn the curse into a blessing for you. Quickly, just listen to this. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 27 to 29. But God has selected for his purpose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise, revealing their ignorance. And God has selected for his purpose the weak things of the world to shame the things which are strong, revealing their frailty. And God also selected, deliberately chose what in the world is lowborn and insignificant and branded and treated with contempt, even the things that are nothing, that he might depose and bring to nothing the things that are so that no mortal man should have pretense or for glorying and boast in the presence of God. So I want you to consider your assignment right now. You're called to greatness as a child of God. Oh, but Pastor Stephen, I, I struggle with this. I struggle with that. I'm, you really don't know me, Pastor Stephen. I'm a mess. Well, let's say you struggle with lying. Maybe you struggle with being deceitful. My friend, I can tell you this. You are called to carry the truth of God's word. Let's say you struggle with being faithful, even loyal. My friend, you are destined to live a faithful life, to be known for your loyalty. Maybe you're struggling with coveting, envy, even materialism. You're assigned to be an amazing giver in this life, to help others, to help the poor. God has a powerful call on your life. He wants to make you royalty and give your life power and authority so that you can be a blessing to others. 
Mm, I love that. I know I've been, I've been several of these people myself, lost, broken, fractured, fearful, struggling, on and on, all these things. But God started to work on the inside of me. He changed, transformed my inner reality. God began doing a work of uniting my heart. Fracture by fracture, I surrendered them to Him to the degree that I'd trust in God with a fracture in my life. Guess what He'd do? He'd faithfully heal, repair, restore, and fill. And if I didn't trust Him with a room in my heart, in that area, I remain disconnected, de-unified if there is such a thing. What do you want, my friend? You can do this slowly or quickly. You can have it all or you can have just a little. What do you want? God will not go past your willingness to trust Him or to surrender to Him. Judas died fractured, stuck in his lust for money and position. It wasn't God's plan but he wouldn't let Jesus help him. Let God help you right now. Let God cover you, protect you, bring you out, bring you into your real value. You might be thinking right now, Pastor Stephen, I'm one of those people that's just, I'm falling apart on the inside. I do the best I can to look like I've got it together on the outside, but inside I'm disconnected, unhooked. I can feel it. I'm just not working right. If that's you, I want you to know that no matter how hopeless or desperate you feel, God is smiling on you right now. And He wants you to know that He loves you. God the Father can repair all those broken and disconnected parts of your soul. He is the expert healer. Jesus, He asks you this in Matthew 16, verse 26. He says, what profit is it for a person to gain the whole world but lose their soul? There's no profit. Gaining the whole world cannot, it will not, make up for a broken, disconnected soul. So you can do this right now. You can fix this. Give your life to Jesus. Jesus came to earth to suffer brokenness for you and me so that we could have legal right to being whole on the inside, to being united in our hearts and working according to God's manufacturer's standard. Praise God. Pray this prayer with me right now. Dear Lord Jesus, I need you to unite my heart. You suffered on the cross for me. You died and were put in the grave for me. Three days later, God, you, God raised you up from the grave. I believe that truth. Forgive me of all my sins. I repent. Heal my disconnections. Search me, dear Lord. Please repair anything out of order. I give you all of my life. You are my Lord and Savior. I pray this in your name, Jesus. Amen. Praise God. You are a child of God right now. And every legal right that is part of the family privileges and benefits, they're yours. That's exciting. You need to keep receiving, growing, and being fruitful by giving. That's the manufacturer's standard for your life. You're born again to win, and you're healed to live life strong. <music>